Okay, recording in progress. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Rock Shop with Ralph, your source for the best celebrity interviews. Today, you can't get better than this. We have two members of the Power Rock Supergroup, Scream Taker, and they also oh. are returning. You like that, haven't you? Yeah, look at that shit. They also are <laughs> returning members of the Rock Shop with Ralph and friends of mine. I can say you're a friend of mine, Vinny, now because you were on the show already. What's your we name got again? <laughs> Julio. Julio, okay. We got Jim Crean and Vinny Apice from the band Scream Taker. We have Charlie from Deco Records, and we have Lee, who designed all the artwork for the Power album Killer Beautiful. Let's welcome everybody to the Rock Shop with Ralph. Hey, guys. Hey, hey, Charlie, how you doing? And say hi. Oh, yeah, my friend. Good, hey, man. Good to see you. You got lost there. You're on the bottom. <laughs> All right. So, what's up, guys? What's up? Ralphie and I, boy. And I got to say, uh, Lee, I hope you're not out of place because you got three guys from the East Coast, uh, actually, four guys, but three guys that talk like, uh, two guys that talk like a little bit like me with my accent. <laughs> you, got, you got Vinny from Brooklyn. You got Charlie from Jersey, and you got Ralph from Queens, it, and and you got Jim, Jim up there from Buffalo. So uh, I, I hope I hope you can understand us. <laughs> We're all good, mate. I'm international. You're international, <laughs> and I, and I was joking before we went we went on the air that I thought we had Gavin Rossdale on the show with us. <laughs> this, this this guy Lee is the spinning image of Gavin Rossdale from Bush, <laughs> <laughs> and and Gwen Stefani's husband. I love Gwen, Gwen so far, Nick. I cope with that. <laughs> oh, Vinny, look. You see the shirt I'm rocking? I know those guys. Yeah, I know. I, I, that, that, they, that shirt says Apathy Brothers, not a peace brother. Not a peace. Oh, oh and, cool. I, and I got to say, when I had your brother on the show, he was like, it's a peace. It's not apathy. And, and, and we know that whole thing because apathy, a peace. But you're, you're always going to be Vinny Apathy to me. That's right. That's right. Maybe All right. So, good. guys. Kill the Beautiful, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal album. I've been listening to it now. Uh, I won't tell everybody, but I had an advanced copy, and I've been listening to it. Uh, so I want to talk to Charlie first. Charlie, how did you come about signing these guys? And how, how did Deco Records come about? We'll talk a little bit about that. Well, let's see. For, uh, just want to correct you real quick. It is Deco. 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 That's totally cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's kind of like a peace apathy. Yeah, know. I mean, I don't know. I, I would say peachy, but I'm Italian. <laughs> yeah, peachy is the Italian. My, my other Lost brother, translation. Frank, lives, he lives around the corner. He calls himself Frank a peach. That's there the Italian go. pronunciation. There <laughs> so there's three of them. Yeah, but but anyway, Deco was actually started uh, many years ago by uh, an old producer friend of mine, and we actually kind of resurrected it about two three years ago, and it's uh, really just taken off. I mean, we've grown pretty rapidly in the past couple of years. Um, you know, right now we've got bands like, you know, obviously Screen Taker, which is an awesome band. Uh, Ten years after, um, I mentioned yesterday, we have Vinny's brother Carmine. We did his Guitar Zeus box set, which is a really cool project for us. And then we got uh, John Atwistle, um working with his estate for a bunch of unreleased stuff that we're just starting to release next month. So we got that coming up. Um, we worked with, uh, we did Steve Walsh from Kansas's record, John Alfonte from Kansas, his record. We actually go the, the gamut. We've got the Gil Evans Orchestra. So we do a bunch of jazz and big band stuff. Uh, Gil, Gil Evans was Miles Davis's uh, musical director. And then we go to the pop stuff. We've got uh, pop star Tiffany without her new record, which is, uh, gets a little metal because she does have uh, Tracy Guns and the guys smell like guns playing on a track on that. Oh, cool. um, Tiffany's playing with Tracy Guns? Yeah, it's actually actually it's amazing. They do a great cover of uh, "Keep On Swinging" by Rival Sons, and it's uh, it's actually pretty fucking cool. Uh, mm -hmm. So we got that coming up later this year. And um, with Scream Taker, we do some stuff with Jeff Keller, who manages the uh, the Bouchard brothers, Alan Joe from uh, Blue Oyster Cult fame. We Long Island boys. Yeah, so we do a lot of stuff with them. And uh, Jeff kind of introduced me. He said, "Hey, I'm managing you know Carmine and Vinny again, working with them. They got this really cool band, uh, or actually, you know, Vinny's got this really cool band with Jim Crean. You know, so we checked it out, and I loved it. You know, I'm, I'm a fan of the uh, of, of Vinny's work with, with Dio and Sabbath. Oh, Vinny was in Dio. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I was. Yeah. I, I didn't know that. Holy shit. 
So anyway, and actually, I, I didn't mention radio. Yesterday. Yeah, I didn't mention yesterday, Vinny, but I think the second concert I ever saw was uh, Sabbath at Madison Square Garden, Mob Rules '82 or something like that. So, oh yeah, cool. Yeah, fucking cool stuff. So, yeah. and, and we heard the Scream Taker, and it just has that vibe. You know, it's, it's got Vinny's signature, you know, drum sound and drum playing, and lots of great riffs. And, and Jim's done, did an awesome job with the vocals. And you know, we just thought it was really cool and, and wanted to, you know, get it out for these guys. Awesome. Yeah. Now, now I got to say the the first thing I'm gonna I'm gonna go around. I'm gonna get to everybody, but I got to say, I know Jim for years now, and and I'm a huge fan of his. And when he sent me this, what I tell you, Jim. Yeah, first you were like, because you like my solo stuff, you were like, I don't know about this. I said, give it a chance. Listen to it twice, three times. When did he you say called. you need a new drummer? When was that? Right away. <laughs> he said, who's that on a drum? That guy needs to take some lessons. Never, That's never, like, Vinny. You're my boy. I never said that. No, no. You, you did. At first you were like, I don't know yet. And then you called me up a couple of days later. I said, fucking blown away. Blown the fuck away. This is the <laughs> album of the year. Album <laughs> of the year. At first, no, I said, I said to Jim, I says, because I'm so used, and, and Vinny, Vinny can attest to this, because when he was on the interview last time, he goes, I want the next album to be, to be metal and raw. I don't want the puffy shirts. He, he said, yeah. he said to me, I don't want Jim, Jim have puffy shirts on, on the album. So Jim channeled his inner Dio, and this album is Dio 2022 to the max. Because at first, listen, you're going to say, holy shit, this is fucking savage. This is the raw, and, and Steph Hahn did a great job on guitar. I got to yeah. mention that as well. I mean, you hear you hear songs like "Curse of the Werewolf" and "Stone Cold," and you're like, "This is this is Sabbath." I mean, were were you trying to get a Sabbath? Were you doing that, or did did Steph send you riffs and you're like, "Holy shit, this sounds like this," and we're gonna go for that. that. That's Steph, what happened. Steph happens. sends the riffs, but he uses some really fucking strange chords. You know, he goes to these really minory chords all of a sudden that you go, whoa, I love that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it really makes it dark and heavy. And and because uh, I, I did his uh, I think I did his first album. You know, I played on his first album and I loved the chords he used. And then with Jim on, on, on top of it, working with Steph as well. So we didn't say, let's try to make it like Sabbath. It just turned out that way and jim uh, the uh the lyrics how do you how do you go i mean because I, like i said i know you for years and, and i always i'll talk to jim and i'll say jim what's this lyric mean and i wish yeah. i mean i wish i could have did that with ronnie and, and i got to, i got to talk to ronnie twice and, and and as i always said he he says what do you think you know what do you think about the song <laughs> yeah. that's what he would say you know i'm like right you know this lyric touched me what, what what do you what does it mean you know and he goes no what do you what do you think it means so is that what you were trying to do, Jim? I mean, talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. When I write songs, I don't write them. So it's so blatant that everybody understands it. You know, I write it to what <laughs> it, your interpretation is. And yeah. then Vinny will right. ask me, what the hell's the song even called? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right, it's ben? funny. I've been doing this so many years. I don't listen to lyrics. I just don't hear the lyrics. I don't know the lyrics. I know some of them. I don't get the meaning from lyrics. I'm miss, I'm the guy underneath that, the foundation. I'm the structure guy, the riff guy. Oh, let's hang it. Let's, you know, change keys. Let's do, I build the stuff with the band. But the lyrics and, and I hear the melodies, of course. But I just don't hear the lyrics. The only lyrics I hear are some of Ronnie's and then the Beatles, because it's easy, you know. But, Speaking uh, of the Beatles... I got to I got to commend you on a great version of a day in the life by your other band. Excuse me. Your oh, other yeah. band last in line. Great version, Vinny. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, and, really well. Yes. And you mentioned, excuse me. Wow. All of a sudden I got the hiccups. You, you meant you're mentioning um, lyrics and it's funny you said that because the last time you were on with me, Vinny, I said, oh, listen, Vinny, what is this song? Don't tell the kids on the, the Angry Machine album. I said, I have no idea what that song means. I mean, can you, can you elaborate? And Vinny goes, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> I got no fucking idea what it means. Ronnie used to sit. sit sometimes I get and go, yeah. So, so this is this is you know I'm through the lyrics and this is what it means and I go cool, cool. And then you know next day I would forget what he said. Or, <laughs> I'm, not I'm that, waiting. I'm not that that, that deep. 
I'm the foundation guy, the, the meat and potatoes guy, the fucking lay down grooves, yeah, and the riffs and and I hear what Jim does. So I made a couple of little suggestions to Jim, like hang out the notes here. That would mm -hmm. be cool. I'm good at that stuff, and um, Jim's great at the writing the lyrics and singing the shit at him. So. Yeah, so I, I that that album came out in 1996. You know, I've been listening to it for 26 years, and and, and I waited to finally meet Vinny. And and ask somebody that, that was on the album with the song meant that he tells me I had no fucking idea. <laughs> that, that that was great. That was great. Oh, but ask me now, I'm older. What does it mean? I have no fucking idea. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's funny you say that though, Vinny. <clears throat> Listen to the lyrics or had no clue of lyrics until recently. And actually, my partner at Deco, Bruce, he he's really like a lyric guy. He really gets into with that stuff. And it's only been like the past year or so that I've actually paid attention because um, before it was just the melody and, and like yourself, I mean, I'm not laying the foundation, but my moonlighting gigs with Amy, well, I'm kind of with the keyboards kind of painting right. the landscape and adding the color to the stuff. And I always latch to the melody because I want to follow that, but really never keyed in on, uh, on the lyrics. And it's funny, we we're working with the, the Bouchard brothers with another group that we have on, on doing Don't Fear the Reaper. And it's like, I've heard that song on the radio for 40 fucking years or whatever. And I didn't know until recently what the lyrics <laughs> Yeah, or even even meant what the song's about, or or the lyrical content of it. So it's uh, so actually many years later, I actually did start paying attention to the lyrics. But anyway, <laughs> I, I, hey. I I read them when they're on a lyric video. Right. Even our own songs, I go, oh wow, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, I didn't know. It, it's funny because I told Jim's got a song called "Follow Your Heart" on one of his best albums, Insatiable, and I call him up and I'm like, Jim, you know this guy. This guy, you know, he's in love with this girl, and, he, and and she was, the fuck you talking about? That album's about an alien. That song's about an alien invasion. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did. He called me. He goes, that fucking song, follow your heart. It's so it touched me. And I go, why? And he goes, well, it's about the love, the love triangle. I go, what are you fucking about no love triangle. What is a alien coming on and killing the mankind? Uh, <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? It's about a fucking alien invasion, Ralph. That's why Ronnie said, "What does it mean to you?" Right. Yeah, Ron, Ronnie's like, I'm tired of answering these questions. What does it mean to you? Yeah. You know. So Lee, we're gonna get you in now. Wake okay, up. Right. I, I I gotta I gotta commend Lee because it's it's probably midnight or one o'clock in the morning over over by him. Yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, Possible. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. So how how did they come about getting you to do the artwork for the album? So, um, working with Deco for a couple of years, um, supporting um, everything, everything they've thrown at me, um, and then Scream Taker came along, and I thought, oh, this is an interesting one. Um, first song they've thrown at me was Curse of the Werewolf. Based awesome. On the, Best track on the, the album. The old Hammer um, English movie type idea, and I thought, oh, okay, this is, this is somewhat different, get my teeth into, literally. Um, and then it just progressed from there and um, numerous emails and we transfers and batting ideas between each other. And then we finally came up with a, an awesome set of um, pictures and booklet to, to go along to support the, the release. Awesome. So it went really, really, really well. I, I do have to say, I mean, Lee's awesome. He does a lot of work for us, probably 80% of our, our releases now. But, but this one, when this one came through the back cover, I mean, I think hands down, best best stuff Lee's done yet. It just really, really captured what these guys are going for, and I was super stoked when I, when I saw it. I'd love to see it. I yeah. sent it to you. You don't open the folders. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want the CD. I want the CD. I um, what? So we had a, a call. Me, Lee, and Charlie had a call. And, and me and Vinny are big horror movie fans. Me and Vinny like the old, old Hammer shows and all the Universal Monsters and all that cool shit. Me and Vinny talk about it all the time. And Vinny does a lot of them horror conventions and signs autographs and stuff. He meets all of our, our heroes in the horror genre. So when we were <laughs> talking to Lee about doing this, me and Charlie, I said, that's what me and Vinny kind of foresee, like a sci-fi horror kind of mm -hmm. movie book. And... um and uh Lee nailed it. Oh my god. When I, I was getting goosebumps, I'm getting them out. When I look at the books and the pictures, and I was like, this I is exactly what Vinny's gonna be blown away if he ever opens his email and looks at it. <laughs> he'll be blown away because the you know, I, I, get the, I get the email, I got I, I gotta check this out. And then I go on to other emails and then oh shit, I gotta do this. Or this. 
and then that email works its way down and then i fucking forget like, oh shit i gotta look at that video i'll send it oh, i'm gonna I'll, resend I'll, it to you i'm gonna resend it to you in a little while I'll but while well, you, well, you guys chat i'm gonna go grab a copy because they are actually in so let me grab one and uh okay. yeah, I'll, I'll give i'll give you my address charlie i'll, 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 <laughs> back and I'll show you guys so back to back to lee on this so you know when i was giving him my ideas he's like okay okay and i'm like you know, I, I hope he gets to my what I'm trying to say and what Vinny, me and Vinny talked about this prior. Vinny's the one that actually started sending me pictures of like screaming woman and all that way when we were just recording it. We were trying to come up with an idea and we didn't want to make it look hokey or or like when you pick it up, oh yeah, another Black Sabbath ripoff album, you know, same kind of thing. We didn't want that. So Vinny came and started sending me all these pictures of like screaming 50s and 60s sci-fi people. And I go, that's really cool. That's a great concept. So Vinny came up with a concept. And then when I sent it over to Lee, what we were kind of going for, he just threw it out of the park. Yeah, well, the back right. cover is just my, well, you that, see that's this. because your other covers, I played a couple of songs on your other albums and you were standing in the front with <laughs> pretty boy, Jim. And I went, Jim. Oh, that looks sharp. Come on, Jim. <laughs> there you go. Over. Look at that back, Vinny. Look at that back. That oh, is yeah, insane. <clears throat> We look fucking good, man. Do you got the bullet? Oh, oh, look at that. Look at the hammer oh, stuff wow. there. That looks great. <laughs> That's wow. cool, dude. Nice no, job. No, there. no one's seen this yet. So Ralph, you, you got you got look the at that, Vin. The it screen taker. Beautiful. Put that back up, Charlie. That looks really cool. Right. See that, Vin? Yeah. Now it's show him the send me a couple of those. I will, yeah. Shoot shoot me your address and I'll mail them out. The book was yet. So once I get that, I'll uh, I'll send that to you guys as well. Lee, everybody's commending you on the artwork. Lee, see that? Yeah. Lee nailed Thank it. you, my friends. Job, Thank Lee. you. You nailed it, Lee. Thank yeah. you. That's and, and, you know, for a minute, I want to talk about the name because Scream Taker is the name of the song that Jim has on his album, London Fog, um, which was coincidentally dedicated to who, Jim? Well, when, when I wrote that song, Vinny wouldn't know the lyrics, but when I wrote the song, it was all about <laughs> Ronnie. It was a dedication to Ronnie. Right. So I had right. we, we had Rudy play on it, who played bass on it because he played with Ronnie. We had Vin, of Rudy course, Sardo. Rudy Sardo, and um, we had Vin on it, of course, and Steph played guitar. And I wrote the song when about Ronnie. I wrote all the music for that too, and I wrote the whole song. So when I wrote it about Ron, um, these guys nailed it. So I thought, what a cool th song! And I was trying to think of a good title, so I just said "Scream Taker," you know, and uh, that's what it became. So then when we were putting this project together. We're going to call it Vinnie Apathy Scream. And that's it. And Vin, didn't we do like a song for some thing in Germany? We did one song, right? We did. On a compilation. He didn't know about the email. He doesn't know. Yeah. No, he did it. Vinnie was the one that got it. Wasn't it in like Germany or something like that? It was we did somewhere. A... Yeah, it wasn't here. That's for sure. So we did a, We did well, one song. Jim wanted to call it Vinnie Apathy Scream. Say Vinnie. And I'm like not yeah. into that shit. It's like I'd like <laughs> to be part of a band. Yeah. You know, and uh, like Scream Tape, all right, who's that? Not Finney Apathy's blah blah. If it was Carmine, he'd fucking name it Carmine Scream Taker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Carmine. So I like to be the band, and then Jim Jim liked it, and yeah, uh, he had it on the previous song, so it's a great name, right? I mean, Jim, I gotta tell you, lyrically, this has to be some of your best lyrics you've ever wrote. I told you this the other day. I mean, I sit there and I'm listening to these songs and I'm like, holy shit, that is so fucking deep. Vinny, you're not going to know this. So I'm going to say that, that that lyric is so deep, you know, like when you're saying seven son of a seven son in, 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 in that song and, and you got, it makes you think it makes you, you know, yeah. you're like, what the hell, you know, what, what, what do you, what do you think about when you're writing these lyrics? Do you, do you say I'm going to write a song about so-and-so? Do you do that? Or it just comes to you and this is what the song is. With this album, you know, we wrote it during COVID. So we had all this time on our hands. None of us were touring. None of us were doing anything but sitting in our homes, really. So I actually really sat down and took my time and really focused on, on the lyrics on this one. And said, I'm really going to make good lyrics for this for this album because the songs were so powerful. And then um, I would do them. And then I would send it over the songs over to Vin. And then Vin would rearrange them and make them like, songs because we have parts me and Steph would have parts but Vinny really gets credit for arrangement because Vinny really took the verses and parts and said let's try all this and mishmatches together to make it a song and then all of a sudden I went okay I like that better so then I would rewrite the lyrics so 
really, I really took my time writing the lyrics this time. And yeah, they're pretty deep. Yes. I mean, anybody who's getting this album, first track I suggest you go to is Curse of the Werewolf. That is hands down the best track on the album. And and you'll you'll run away with it. And you'll, you'll constantly listen to it after that. A, a, um, and crank it up wow. <laughs> and it's got a very, very, very live oh. drum sound on this album. Fuck, I, I did that here in my studio. Saw two drums, right, Vinny? Yeah. But uh, are I you watch you every week, Vinny. Oh, you do? Thank you. Yeah, you, you, uh, never, com you never comment or answer my questions, but that's okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, well, my, my Lala, my assistant girlfriend. I know. I know. I'm like, please call talk to me. You know, come on, say my name. Okay. Are you on the <laughs> Ralph there? Of course. Okay, I'm going to tell him. No, that's all right. Go ahead, Vinny. You were then, talking. I'm then, sorry. Then you know we're going to pick you, and you're going to go, hey, Vinny, what did you think of the lyrics? Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> I said, lyrics? Who's that? Ralph? Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's funny. It's funny because <clears throat> I used to watch a show called The Magic Card when I was growing up. Uh, and and every every if beginning of the show they go hello Johnny and Jason and 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 Lee and Charlie and I'm like say my name say my name and okay yes all right guy and then they never got my name and and and, and ri ri riding when, when we were kids we used to ride our bikes and they used to have these little license plates with your name on the back of your bike and I could never find Ralph never ever well, I can't I only found Vincent Vincent Jimmy. there you go and then I then I was looking for Drum Monster. They didn't make that either. I wonder why. <laughs> I'm sure you had that problem, right, Lee? Oh, no, not in the Lee's UK, easy. man. Not in the UK. Not in the UK? Lee's There's a lot of Lees? <laughs> so. and, and coincidentally, Lee's, Lee's lives in Sheffield, England, which is home of the Def Leppard boys. Def Leppard. And also they make, uh, what, um, utensils, eating. They yeah, silver. Silver and all that stuff. Oh, yes. I've been there many times. <laughs> and Vinny's from and Vinny's from Brooklyn, and I'm from Queens, where we make gangsters, right, Vinny? <laughs> <laughs> we make egg creams. We make egg cream. Charlie's not too far, too. So Charlie, Charlie makes, Charlie's from Jersey, where they make cement shoes. Jersey. Yeah, that, that's where we, I got. I got the big. Piece hey, Charlie. Of, yeah. What does Brooklyn and uh, <laughs> pantyhose have in common? Brooklyn and pantyhose have in common. I don't know. Hit me, Vinny. What? Flatbush. Ah. <laughs> Flatbush nice. is a section in Brooklyn, Lee. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he told me that joke. He told me that joke the last time, Charlie. So I heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, so do we have any plans? I mean, I know what the answer is going to be, but I hope. Do we have any live shows coming? Do we have any plans for touring for this album? We've got We're some offers on it. Yeah, working on it for sure. We got some offers in Brazil, so that's going to South America. That's going to happen. Um, Vin's going out on tour with Best in Line for a few months, right, Vin? Talk about well, that. Well, yeah, here and there. We're doing a couple of weeks off, a couple of weeks, yeah. But we're going to um, try to put something together for next year for this because it's – Yeah. Uh, well, I, I mean, I, I'd love yeah. to see this because, I mean, really, I, I haven't I haven't seen um, – Anything from you? Actually, I'm going to see you, uh, Vinny. I'm going to see Last in Line playing with Zebra at the Paramount Long Island, November 24th. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll be at that show. I think there's two shows. There's two shows, yes. Yes, two shows there. They sold out. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So you won't be seeing them. Hey, that's a good package. <laughs> two big, you know, good bands with some history, so. Yeah, I mean, and maybe you guys can can piggyback and and do a package with somebody else, you know? Maybe another maybe another uh, deco artist, right, yeah. Charlie? We've actually been talking about that, uh, Ralph, about trying to pair up a couple of deco artists and put something together. So. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So, so Lee, is there is there any other uh, albums that you've done artwork on? That, that uh, common, common a piece. Guitar Hero and um, Guitar Zeus. I know that guy. 25th. <laughs> yep. Seen him knocking about. Um, what did you do? Guitar Zeus? Guitar Zeus? Yeah. Yeah, I did that one. Yeah, we, uh, we did the whole layout for the whole box set, which is another one that came out really well. That looks amazing, too. I just saw that. Carmine actually, actually yeah. gave me one of those. Something looks amazing. I'm, I'm coming out with one of those kind of albums, too. It's called Cat in a Hat. <laughs> <laughs> 
Box set? Dr. Seuss. Nice. Hearing Dr. Seuss on on guitar. <laughs> guitar Zeus I, and Dr. I, Seuss. Yeah, that guitar Zeus, I just don't like the name. I, I told him, I'm gonna call it Guitar Zeus. I'm guitar Zeus. <laughs> I, kept, I kept thinking of Dr. Seuss. Yeah. Hey, but one thing about Carmine is what Carmine, what Carmine wants, Carmine should do whatever Carmine wants. I, I did I did my interview with him, but did you catch that interview I did with your brother where he's eating falafel? He's eating while he's talking to you? He's eating nice. while he's talking to me during the interview. <laughs> he's talking to pieces, pieces of rice to flying out of his fucking mouth. He's talking to me. Probably some on his shirt, too. I swear, I'm like, I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be eating my lunch during this interview, you know. And he's, I, what are you eating? He goes, I'm, ha I have some falafel, some rice, some chicken, and, and he got, he got a whole spread out there. He's, he's eating during the interview. Was but he that, on the phone? No, 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 he wasn't on the phone. But that's, that's that, that was pretty good. He's on the phone. So he's on the phone. <laughs> he's always making moves. Yeah. So Jim, you, you came out with a video called uh, "Stone Cold" was the first a uh, track, very, very Dio and Sabbath sounding. We, we, we attest to that. Uh, what's what's the next? I gotta uh, say that video is fucking crazy. <laughs> Nutty. Yeah, I mean, Jim told I didn't know it was a video for the song on the album or whatever. He just said it's going to be just a video for something as spooky. So I put on like almost like a priest outfit with glasses and just just stupid. And <laughs> it looks really fucking like a sea horror movie. It does you know? It's, perfect. Yeah, it's like a movie. And yeah, all in, wrapped up Colleen's in one. Colleen's in it, and it's fucking hilarious. It's Colleen great. is the girl that he that that gets bitten. Yeah. yeah. Mike, what happened with that is like Vince said. What Robbie from the Google Goo Dolls asked me to um to do a video. He was for his music is arts festival that he does, and to promote it. So I called Vin and I said, "Well, we're going to do a video." Picked a song that we were working on. Stone Cold wasn't really even finished yet, but we just started working on it. And um, I had Steph do his parts on a green screen. I had Vin do his stuff on the green screen. And the guy who did the video, Joe Palumbo, um, just another started, Italian for Queens. Yeah. yeah. We just started, <laughs> like, we didn't, we didn't really know what we were going to do with this video. We just kind of said, okay, we're, we're going to do this. We went to like this haunted house type thing. It was around Halloween time. And next thing you know, it's uh, it's like a movie. We just started writing it as we went along. So it's kind of neat. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It I looked at it. Oh my God, this is for the album now. How funny. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. cool. Vinny, do you get this a lot? Um, you know, uh, this this song sounds so much like Dio. This song sounds sounds so much like Sabbath. I mean, uh, do you get that a lot? I mean, throughout your career? I mean, did you hear this song? It sounds just like that. It sounds like Holy Diver. I did another project with some friends. These are unknown guys. And I just laid down a big, heavy groove. And I changed it like I was going to a chorus. Then I came back and did the chorus. I structured it. And it's one of these Sabbathy tempos. And I sent it. <laughs> it sounds like Sabbath again. It's like, holy shit. You know, it's just the way I play very behind the beat, you know, and it's easy to play to make it heavy. It's easy to sing to, right, Jim? You got plenty of room. Yeah, you don't and, step. Uh, you don't it step tends on. to lead to, oh, this sounds a bit like Sabbath and Dio, because that's what I did in those bands, you know? So. Uh, well, well, I got to say, me being, me being a drummer, I mean, loving, you know, one of my heroes, Vinny, and you might, one of my favorite drummers of all time. Right. Um, I got to say, my, my favorite drum sound album uh, from you has to be Dehumanizer. Oh, yeah. That is the <laughs> best album, the, the best drum sounding Sabbath album, right. hands down. That okay. was an album recorded in Wales with when Mac. Mac produced it, who did Queen and some Zeppelin stuff. And he had these amazing overhead mics. And uh, it wasn't even my kit, it was a Tama Renta kit. And he just got a killer sound. And then when they went to mix it, I was really bored being in Wales on a farm, you know, being there for a couple of weeks. And I'm like, there was no internet back then. And I could only eat so much Indian food. And then <laughs> and I said, can I, maybe I'll just go home. Ronnie, what do you think? Like, he goes, yeah, you can go home. That's, we'll mix it. So I went home and then when they mixed it, Ron came back, came over my house and put the cassette in the cassette. Listen to the mix. The fucking drums are so loud. 
I went, holy shit, this is killer, man. This is heaven. I said, if I was there, I probably would have said, maybe take him down a little bit. He goes, well, we didn't, we wanted to make sure you could hear him and you weren't there. So we, I said, maybe I won't show up on some of the other albums. This is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, what, what I'm attesting to is this, this album has a, has a very, very heavy drum yeah. sound. I mean, definitely, you can definitely hear it on this album. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, and, and we got to give credit to Artie Dillon who, who produced the Artie. album. Yeah. He you know, it, produced it. And, well, we all produced it, but Artie mixed the shit out. Yeah, of it. I already mixed yeah. it. We produced it. Artie mixed it. But Ben, go back real quick to when you were recording that album. Tell the oil story. That's a great story. The, the, the what story? The Tony Iommi oil story. Tell that quick. <laughs> it's a great story. You guys will well, like this. Join the Indian. humanizer. So we're on this studio. Uh, I forgot which one, Ridge Farm or one that Lee might know what, where these are. Uh, Mono Valley. We did them in both. So we lived there. Ronnie and I had to live there and Geezer and Tony would come up and they would stay a couple of nights and go home. They were in Birmingham. So Tony pulls up one night in a brand new Range Rover. So he comes in the studio, we're in there and he tells uh, Geezer, Ron and me, hey, I just got a new Range Rover. It's outside. Go, oh, wow. What color? I think it's green, you know, British racing green with it. Oh, let's go see it. So we all walk out and check it out it's a beautiful car you know we go wow that's nice tone we checked it all out then we let's go back in the studio tony goes first then geezer then me then ronnie well ronnie to me and as we walk in i see a can of oil so i go hey ron let's get the oil and put it underneath the car but i'll do it but you have to tell him it's leaking because if i do he knows i'm full of shit and <laughs> we play facto cool jokes so they went in, I put oil, some oil into the engine. And then a little bit later, Ron goes out of the studio. He like pretends he went outside, comes back in. He goes, hey, Tom, man, there's some oil on the underneath your car. And Tony goes, what? what? Oh, shit. <laughs> so he goes out, I go out, and geez, we all go out. And I knew, knew something about cars, and Tony knew that. He goes, man, have a look under there. So I go underneath and I'm kind of laughing. I go, well, it looks like it's from the uh, the seal there. The engine pan was leaking. And he go, oh, no. So we're having a laugh. We go back in. All of a sudden, an hour later, the auto club, auto club British auto, auto club comes out. And they, they, he called them. But it, we were out in the middle of nowhere. And it cost them like 400 bucks for the people to come out. And <laughs> he had to tell them. And we were cracking up. He, he's, he's got a good sense of humor. He was laughing. But the next day, my room was destroyed. They went in. Tony destroyed my room. And uh, furniture upside down and <laughs> fucking nude pictures all over the place. And, oh, man. Yep. Was uh, they, they said Ryan, Ryan was a big practical joker, right? Oh, yeah. Tony fucking. He would tell his roadie, he would, he would pretend he had problem with the amp, you know? And this was like a stack right a stack for rehearsal of marshall and this guy fergie goes no he, you know the speaker's blown you know let me have a listen he'd kneel down put his ear right near the speaker and don't even go just blast it and <laughs> he almost <laughs> fell backwards into the off of the stage you know so he did shit like that you know oh god so, so jim so that's why we got along because i'm a practical joker too and uh we we both got along. As soon as I met him, I knew where he was at, and uh, yeah, all that stuff. One time he told me when we first joined the band, I was playing. I was playing more fills, you know. And he said, "Well, maybe you should play those fills there." I said, "Really? Yeah, you know." I said, "Okay, Tom." Next night, I fucking went crazy and played fills everywhere. But he knew. He's looking at me. You bastard. <laughs> <laughs> and then I calmed down, you know. I don't want to go too far. Jim, if you had if you had to pick a track on the album that is your favorite, which one would it be? Who? Jim. Hmm? I'm not gonna ask you about lyrics, Vinny. Curse. <laughs> the, one, the one you like, Curse. That's my favorite. Curse of the Werewolf. Yeah, that's that's definitely I like Stone Cold. See, I'm not Stone listening Cold's to the lyrics. I'm listening to that big ba da ba da 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 space. Yeah. Space. Da don't 
down. You can do so much with that kind of feel. You know? Well, what Vinny was saying before with, with his playing, what I like working with Vinny is um, he plays to my vocals, so he doesn't step on vocals. And, and that's what I always liked about the deal and Black Sabbath stuff Vin played, because Ronnie got to really breathe and really expand his vocal. So I get to do that on these records. And um, he like, he'll accent, Vinny will accent like, when I hit a high note, Vinny will like accent to it. And I thought that was really kind of cool. We did a lot of that type of stuff, but it accidentally happened, right? Vin, uh, during yeah. Um, yeah. Broken well, Mirror. I, listen, I do listen to the melodies and where you are. And yeah. I listen to everything and try to catch on as best that make it more interesting, you know? And, um, but never once has Ronnie ever said, or Jim, you're playing over my vocal. Because if you listen to some of the tracks, that and Holy Diver, Ronnie singing, and I'm, bah, 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 you know, it goes right over the vocal. And he never, he dug it. He did, never said anything about that. Huh. Jim, you hear that? The, the legend Vinny Apice is including you in the same sen sentence with Ronnie James Dio. Oh, did yeah, he's a fucking killer singer, Jim. He, that's right. He's, he's, I, listen. Yeah. Thanks, Vin. Well, I, I always said, Jim, Jim, Jim confronts any platinum selling band right now and fit right in. And I tell this to Jim all the time. Yeah. Jim, Jim, do you got you got to pinch yourself sometimes and say, you know, you're playing with Vinny. This guy is, uh, you know, we're too good of friends now. In the beginning, for take sure. Me to Dunkin' Donuts one time. To oh, get God. Something to eat. And eat two hours. Buffalo and it took two hours. <laughs> Fuck is it? He's driving. <laughs> yeah, Listen, in the beginning, laughing. I've been I've been playing with Vinny and, Car and Carmine. Don't forget Carmine, too. Um, I've been playing with Carmen and Vinny for so long now, but in the beginning, for sure. I mean, people would always say to me, well, you're playing with two of the, in my opinion, two of the best drummers in the world. And um, yeah, and being a we big deal fan as a kid. We used to those shows with a band we didn't know. Right. We'd send them stuff and rehearse at the sound check, try to get it done. And in that one gig, we met Jim and said, who's this guy, man? Long black hair. He looked pretty evil. But this, this could be really good. And that's yeah. when we met Jim and we, Carmine and I both thought jim was great and, and we got along such a nice guy sometimes and um <laughs> <laughs> and uh it just hit we hit it off you know and it was like as soon as i saw him I went this guy looks good he looks the part you know fucking evil looking so now we're like brothers man the three of us are like right. i consider myself one of their brothers you know but i wouldn't go by a piece epsi apache <laughs> i'd go by a -A -A -C -E. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey Lee, Lee, let's hear let's hear your version. How, what do you how do you pronounce it? I thought it was a piece. <laughs> <laughs> that's because he worked with Carmine. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Carmine. <laughs> they call him Carmen sometimes. Sometimes you know, we'll be I, I played with Carmen. Oz. I played with Ozzy and Sabbath, right? The original okay. band, which was very cool for me. Mm -hmm. And the first night played four or five songs in and Ozzy introduces the band. So my brother played with him already years back. So Ozzy goes, Tony Iommi and, and, and Vinny a piece on the drums. I went, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the next day I, in the hotel lobby, we're getting ready to leave. Go, hey, Oz. I said, come on and I say it differently. He's a piece. I'm apathy. And can you say apathy? And Oh, fuck off. Okay. So next night, he introduces, and he got it. He goes, and Vinny Apice on the, on the drums. And I was like really surprised, but he looked really nervous. Like, am I correct? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because Sharon told him to say that. No, Sharon, I'll tell you what Sharon told him. We're playing first show, first couple of shows, and all of a sudden, he throws water on me. I'm like, oh, fuck. Everything's wet. So I get up, they're wiping everything off in time. And I was like, <laughs> he's laughing. Then he did it again another night right after. Okay. How do I fix this? So then Sharon in the morning in the lobby goes, Vinny, is everything okay? Everything okay? I said, well, yeah, it's great. But he keeps throwing water on me. And she goes, he did. And it stopped. <laughs> she <laughs> she <laughs> <laughs> Aussie, no more water. Don't throw that water on them, Aussie. I'll hold back water. your paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> so it shows you who's wears the pants in the family, right? Oh, oh come on, really? You think she wears the pants? Oh yeah. Aussie's yep. great. He's, he's, he's great, but that was funny. Was like, I gotta ask you guys before we go. Um, what's going on with 
Apathy, bro. I'm, I'm gonna say a piece. We doing another album? What's happening? Uh, we're working on a song for for quite a oh, long time. Oh, by the way, now. by the yeah. way, real quick, I did talk to your brother this afternoon a couple hours ago. He called me about um the lyrics, ironically enough, for one of the songs he's putting. He's getting it in a movie, I guess. And then he asked me about the song you're talking about. Like he wants he wants your stems for that. So yeah, yeah, because he played it. It's it's a really great song, but he Carmine likes to play the parts and then overdub where I'm supposed to play and and then he sends it to me, but he does a quick and it's not exactly in time, you know. So I have to fix that, make sure I play it in time, then send it back to him. So he's I told him you gotta redo your parts because it's not it's not there, you know. So I gotta send him those parts back and then he can put his proper part in there. So I'll send him that. And, and uh, Charlie, not not getting into the legalities, all this stuff, but do we see a, a are we going album by album, or we're going to see a relationship where we're going to be having multiple albums from from these guys? I mean, I'd love to see another album. I love to see, you know work with these guys on, on multiple things. Um, even the the a uh, piece Apathy Brothers, whatever it's called, the uh, album. Actually, Carm, I did send me <laughs> whatever it's called. Yeah, that's a good name for the album. Whatever it's called. <laughs> whatever it's called. <laughs> whatever it's called. <laughs> Uh, cause I, he actually, Carmine sent me a track a while ago. It might be the yeah. one talking about it. It was really, it is that one. really fun. It's on. It was a good track. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Jim, Jim has been a, a, a pleasure to work with. I mean, really, I mean, I think yeah. we talk real well and, you know, like I said, I do a lot of work with, with the guy who's, uh, managing or kind of managing the, the project and some other stuff. So absolutely. You know, both these guys, you know, well, yeah. you that'd know. be good. Only if Lee, we'll sign another one. Only if Lee does all the artwork again. Yeah, Lee, Lee's like Lee's, Lee's like my secret weapon with the uh, man. <laughs> man, he did, he, to do that for the, you. Uh, the John Atwistle one that we talked about earlier, uh, Ralph. Uh, we did the cover for that too, which is and the layout for that is just really really awesome too. Great. So I mean, everybody in closing, I want everybody to go get this album, Scream Taker, Kill the Beautiful on deco records uh it's got very very high, very heavy lyrics some of jim's best work he's done if not the best work that he's done Vinny plays killer drums on it as always i can't say enough hey <laughs> the <Peaky> brothers <laughs> they, 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 you, you tell hey uh lee you didn't do the artwork for this you can tell <laughs> that, that one needs some artwork That's right crazy. yeah Right, I mean, Apathy Brothers, Call Mine and Me, directed to the point. Um, yeah, so go get this album uh, if if you, which you are friends of my friends of the show are all into the Do the Sabbath sounding albums. Uh, you can't get better than this. It's some of Jim and Vinny's best work, and I highly recommend it. It's on Deco Records, and Lee did all the artwork again. Lee, thanks for staying up with us. Thanks, Lee. Gladly, gladly, my friend. <laughs> All right, and uh, the album is out now on Deco Records. So yeah. you want you want to give the website to Charlie where they can get it? Yeah, if you just go to uh, obviously www.decoentertainment.com. You can go to the Scream Taker page, and right from there you can order all the, the merch that we have, the CD, and, and we'll just continually update that. Follow us on our socials. We're always posting stuff about these guys, and uh, we'll be, uh, you know, premiere and hopefully uh, another video or something down the line and, and whatever these guys are up to we'll continually uh support it with hopefully getting them out on the road next year and we'll continually support it the whole time they're out on the road yeah you crank it up mm. yes <laughs> and of course of course it's always going to be on my page i constantly put stuff on my page for these guys and uh love you guys you guys are the best and uh right on. thanks Good for coming you. on thanks for coming on guys i'll talk to you again very very soon All right. thanks guys Cheers, guys. Thanks, Ralph. Bye. Thanks, Charlie. Yes. See you guys. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Bye.